Hello and welcome to Intuitive Nature, the podcast. My name is Susan Jane and I believe that trusting your intuition is the best way to live your life with meaning and purpose. Each week you will hear about how you can connect, develop and trust your intuition through meditations, readings and my own personal experiences. Join me to understand how your intuition can guide you towards a life full of meaning and loving purpose. Hello and welcome to Intuitive Nature, the podcast. I'm Susan Jan, the Intuitist, and I'll be your host for this Intuition and Spirituality series. Now, for some reason, and I'm not really sure why, I'm feeling really nervous today. It may have something to do with this subject because I'm struggling with it at the moment. So this episode is 1.22 and it's called Making Time Your Power, Not Your Excuse. And I know lately I've been making it my excuse. And I'm sure we all do that. We all find that we have these times where we just don't feel like we've got enough time to do anything. I brought up time in last week's podcast as well. And I just feel that we needed to drill down a little bit deeper into it. And with what happened has happened to me over the last week, it's definitely time to talk about time. <laughs> the concept of time to start with is when we're looking at our physical and our spiritual body, we have two aspects towards it. So on the physical side, time, of course, has those elements of 24 hours a day and doing what we can while we can within that period of time. It also has a time frame of our lifespan, which we don't know how long that's going to be, but we know that there is a time frame to it. However, on the spiritual side of things, time isn't as lineal as it is on the physical. It isn't going from point A to point B. It is more integrated together towards everything. It all happens at the same time. Or it can be visited all at once. So for us humans, <laughs> that concept is a little bit hard to grasp, grasp at times. So we tend to focus more on the, the physical side of time. Now, as a spirit, time is irrelevant because we just keep on continuing on and on. Whereas as a human, as a physical being, we have that space in time. So we have this contrast already and that this as our intuition, our intuitive messages are coming through from our spiritual body, it's sometimes clashing with what our physical body is seeing, like what, what we're experiencing at the time. There is this clash to start with. Now, when this information is coming to us from our spirit, it's coming to us in a, as a mental thought, a visual impression, emotional expression, or a physical feeling. So we're getting all this information coming to us, and it's designed to help us make better decisions or decisions that are more in line with the spirit and therefore the life purpose. Again, life purpose, time. Now, if spirit is doing the life purpose and spirit doesn't have the same concept of time that we have, consequently, you may never get your life purpose, but you need to be on track. And so the spirit will be guiding you always to be on the right track towards your life purpose or its life purpose, which you're there for. So what, I was ha what was happening to me this week is um, I was struggling with, with what I'm doing. Now, in all honesty, I've got, to, I've got to fess up here. I have four jobs at this particular time. Well, I should say three jobs that pay and one that is my passion. The three jobs that pay, one is working as, uh, with Google Ads. So I work for a small um, agency with Google Ads and I love the analytical aspect to it. I love getting the head into it and looking at the statistics and getting those thematical analysis. I love doing that side of it. I, I, I really enjoy that, that mental challenge and stimulation. The other aspect I have, as I've told you before, is I am a sports trainer. So that's a physical side of it. So I go there and I'm running young girls between the ages of 13 and 18 in an elite sporting field. So the field is, we call it football, it is actually soccer uh, for those old school people like me. 
I help run that. So I am a sports trainer with that. I've been a sports trainer for over 25 years. Love doing that. Love interacting with the young girls. But it's also a physical aspect too. So it it helps us with that. The other one is I work part-time, just casual help out at SeaWorld um, on the Gold Coast. Now I do this I was doing this when I was doing my university degree. So it was a part-time job and they've just called me back to help out there. So I, look, I haven't had a shift for months because of COVID. It wasn't something I was really concerned about. But in my time now, and when we're looking at the full-time spectrum, I'm heading towards retirement. That's what my goal is, retirement. So I am trying to look at putting these jobs and different things like that into a perspective that I can use as I retire. The Google Ads, I could do that on the road because it's basically from my laptop. And when I retire, I want to travel. So um, I could do Google Google Ads on the road. I can't do football on the road. That is a set time and place. I can't do SeaWorld on the road. So those two elements would have to be dropped. The, The fourth one is, of course, doing Intuitive Nature, which is the podcast the online courses, the books. I've got three other books on the go. So I've already got Intuitive Flowers, which is about your goals in life. I've got, um, I'm halfway through Intuitive Pets, which are about relationships in life. I've got Intuitive Trees, which are about your purpose in life. And I had um, Intuitive, there was another one that was basically just about developing your intuition. So I've got all these books on the go that I want to keep writing for this business. But as you can imagine, I've only got a certain amount of time, (laughs) physical time, to be able to compete this. And the aspect of intuitive nature is it's not making money, but oh my goodness, it is feeding my soul. I just love doing this. I I just get so much enjoyment out of doing that that I can manage to squeeze these in whenever. In fact, I start to prioritize them because I enjoy it so much. When we're looking at all this aspect what happened was I again was looking at um, moving forward to retirement within the next five to ten years and in doing that I thought I wouldn't mind doing something that substitutes one of those or those and have something that I enjoy doing so I started looking at live trading I started looking at forex trading which is forex is short for foreign exchange trading So it's classed as live trading because you put trades on. It's money, obviously money with um, foreign exchange. Um, You put live trades on and sell them very quickly. So it's a very quick turnover. So you can win and lose quite quickly. But for me to do all that, and I love, again, the analytics to it, for me to do that, I needed to learn how to do it. I I wasn't prepared or I'm not prepared to put money up on something that I'm not comfortable with. So I need to learn it. I need to get that understanding, happy to pay for learning and get that understanding. And then what I wanted to do was start to really listen to my intuition and see if this was going the right way and how to do trades. So bringing that spiritual aspect into the business aspect, the physical side of it a bit differently. So what happened was the wheels fell off, okay? Okay. <laughs> I was working, like last week I had myself all organized. It was like do me, uh, do um, the Google Ads this particular time, do football this particular time, give myself time to do my podcast and rah, 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 and then have the weekends off. Now, just to let you know, I have not had weekends off for I couldn't tell you how long. I've always worked with football or SeaWorld or something and I've always worked weekends, even doing the massage when I owned the massage clinic uh, and the natural therapies clinic, I worked weekends too. So it's the first time I've had weekends to myself. That has become a not negotiable aspect. Occasionally I will work, but it's a not negotiable one. It's under my rules. So I've started to have a look at this. And like I said, the wheels fell off. So what happened was Football changed dates, which threw me. Um, I'm now working all day on or all afternoon on the Tuesday instead of my regular shifts uh, because it was school holidays. Things have changed up and they've got carnivals. All of a sudden, it is school holidays. SeaWorld's contacted me. Got two shifts on at SeaWorld. So all of a sudden, everything that I had organized and planned 
has started to shift and change. So I need to still slot in what I want to do and I'm trying to fit it into this time frame. Now, you would be the same. It's like trying to juggle the kids at school with your own work if you're doing it, with, with um, housework, with satisfying this the family here and sorting out the family there. And there's so much that we juggle around. And I'm just giving you my example of business because that's my area at the moment. But there's so much we struggle and juggle around. When I had my three children, I had three in three years, and I struggled a lot with time having three young babies. And I've sort of started to have a bit of a look at it, look at it and I'm trying to get an understanding of what I experienced to tra- help you understand what maybe you can experience and how you can get through this. So I looked at four elements. So there was the time, the situation that I was going in, the expectation that I had on that situation, the focus, and then the priority. So I went through and had a look at three areas in my life that I really remember time being of a, well, I used it as an excuse. One was when the babies were young, so when I had them all there and I was trying to do things. The next time was during the farm, when I was on the farm. We owned a 90-acre organic crop farm. And the third one that really has come to mind, I'm sure there's lots and lots and lots more, but these are the three that I've sort of focused on, is recently about having three jobs and wanting to do my um, intuitive nature work. When we looked at them, when I, I had the three babies, it wasn't so much about the, the babies because they, they were busy it was I, I mean I was busy there was lots and lots of things to do and and you know what it's like having little ones always cleaning up always tidying always doing the washing running around cooking cleaning everything like that I used to do a lot of sewing so I'd make their clothes and I had all this going on so when we look at the time frame so we looked at that they were young babies they were only young babies for a certain amount of time what was my expectation And what is your expectation while you're going through what you're going through? Mine was to be the best mum I could be. So that was my expectation. Now, when we look at our expectation, that was an easy one to say, I wanted to be the best mum. But what does that look like when when you drill down into it? Because my expectation of being the best mum was almost extreme. I wasn't pedantic and over the top. But you see other people and you they look like they've got their lives together and mine was just sort of uh falling apart so maybe my expectation to be the best mum I could be was to be the best mum I could be and not compare it to what others were then I went okay so what was my focus at the time what was my focus when I had those three little ones and you know what my focus at that time wasn't about being the best mum My focus at that time was getting a break or a rest in the afternoon. I did everything I could to get those three little ones down at the same time so I could have some time out myself, whether I wanted to have a sleep, whether I wanted to have, you know, like a nanny nap, whether I wanted to read, whether I wanted to just sit and om, whatever it was, my focus at that time, and I I remember it so clearly, was to have those three babies down, the three little ones down at the same time. They were all having a nap still in the afternoon. And remember, the youngest one, I was I was still breastfeeding the youngest one. Then we start to look at, okay, well, what was the priority? Now, for me to be the best mum, I needed to have that break or that rest in the afternoon. So the priority became then to have the place tidy where I could sit back and go and have a rest or go and have a break. My priority then was to get the place tidied. Now, it didn't have to be spotless. I'm not over-the-top spotless, especially with three babies. But I did want it tidy so I could lay down and it wasn't running through my head going, oh, I should do this, I should do that, I should do this, I should do that. That's what happens when we start to meditate. We have all these thoughts coming in. Oh, I could be hanging up the washing. I could be doing this, I could be doing that. So my priority was to get a few things done that I needed to get done so I could have that break in the afternoon. And I'll tell you what, it was a big juggle, but that was how I 
felt I was the best mum I could be because I gave myself time off and I know that if I don't have some space to myself, things do go a little bit crazy Um, and I'm sure you would experience a bit of that too. So that was that era. I don't know whether you can relate to that and I don't know whether that makes a lot of sense but we start to go with the the expectation is obvious is of um usually sorry not obviously the expectation is usually um of a physical nature the focus is usually of a spiritual nature and the priority is often of a physical nature because we're trying to prioritize our, our time and space so you you're bringing in both elements there so with the next one, just so you get an understanding of it, was the next section was farm work. Now, when I was on the farm, uh, the 90-acre organic crop farm, as you can imagine, there was a lot of work to do. My expectation there was the best to, to grow organic produce uh, so people could come to the farm and get their organic produce. But at the same time, I was actually doing a life coaching course too. But Everything seemed to be around the grow organic produce because that is how we had to make money. Whereas, in all honesty, the focus wasn't about growing the produce. I loved being out in the garden and doing that out on the farm. But the actual focus was, again, having some time off in the afternoon before the kids came home from school on the bus for me to do some study and do a meditation. So again, I've started to look at the focus. Okay, so I needed to grow all this organic crop to create some finances. I needed to have this organic crop coming in. But my my real focus was actually on having some time out so I could do what I needed to do. Again, I loved doing the work, loved getting that done, but it was about giving myself a break in the afternoon. So the priority then became allocating the right amount of time for chores because one of the things I tend to do and I'm guessing a lot of people will do that too is that we go okay I'll just do this at the before I do that and you allow yourself maybe half an hour to I don't know check your emails whatever it is at that stage it was probably throw a load of washing on and you give yourself that time to do that however I'd go into the laundry, ready to throw the load of washing on, and then I'd go, okay, well, I'd soak that first, and I might just wipe this down, and I'll tidy that up, and oh my goodness, look at all that mess there, let's tidy that up. And all of a sudden, that half hour chore becomes an hour and a bit, and everything else starts to, a concertina, you know, get squashed in, and we have to try and get these time frames right. So one of the priority for that was allocating the right time for that chore. So I started to use time as my power. I gave myself this much time and again the expectations slow down, bring that expectation back. Growing organic produce takes time. So what could I do? Okay well I could weed that amount of the garden. I could do a couple of rows of of weeding before this happened or before I'd go and have a break or whatever it was. So I started to allocate chore times that were appropriate to that time and started to look at, okay, what is the priority there? What does need to be done? What has to be done? And what can be left until another time? Um, So we start to prioritize. We start to look at it that way. The more I gave to myself, it didn't necessarily make me feel better. I needed to give myself time but I didn't need a lot of time. I needed quality time. Quality time was getting those jobs done, feeling like I'd achieved that a task and being able to give myself that reward of a bit of time to myself. So we looked at I looked at things like that. And I'm sure that you could do the same. There's, there's things there that you have to do. You, you will need to do. You don't have a choice. I mean, I know when my little, my son was um, very little and he, I'd put him to bed and he had decided to play and you know what they do when they had number twos and they decide to smear that all over the wall yep that's what he did so there's times there when you have to do things and you've got to allocate that time or you know you've got to allow for that time but um cleaning up his uh pooey artwork was really not on my agenda (laughs) however 
you have to be flexible in that aspect and, and look at things like that. That was looking at the focus, my expectation, my focus and the priority allowed me to see what I needed to do. So when I come back to now with the, the three jobs or the, you know, the three jobs and, and intuitive nature, the expect, expectation is to bring in finance. Now, for me to bring in finance, of course, what I would do really is drop intuitive nature because it's not bringing any money in. The focus is on retirement. And so I feel like my expectation is I've got to bring in money for retirement. So I should be working those other jobs, those physical jobs, to build up enough money to get into retirement. That's what you would expect. However, my focus is on retirement, but my focus is on traveling. It's not retirement, stop, I'm, I've retired. It's what I want to do in that retirement. So my focus is on traveling and having time for me, time to be able to write my books, time to be able to talk to people, time to be able to have that space. The expectation, although it is to bring in finance, the whole focus is completely changed when I look at why I wanted, why I wanted to bring in the finance. And the priority now is not about working for other people. It's about creating my own space so my soul, my passion can come forward. It's about developing intuitive nature to help others because that is who I am. That is what I love. That is that is my core. So sure, I need to have a job. I, need to, I don't need to have three, but I do need to have a job to bring in some finances. I do need to support that. And that will help me through but I don't need to have a lot of money. I've never been a big money focused person, but I do get that it's a good energy for us to be able to use to get what we do want. There is no way known I could provide podcasts for you. I could stand here and give you this time to talk and share my stories if I didn't have some sort of financial backing. No one's backing this, I'm backing it. So I'm not here to sell to you, I'm here to give to you and that's what I want to do. So every time I start looking at money with intuitive nature, I tend to go a little bit, I I just don't enjoy it, I just don't enjoy it. So sure, I've got online courses there, if you want to learn how to do flower readings, if you want to connect with your intuition, if you want to enjoy that side of things, I've got them there. Um, But I'm not here to sell, I'm here to give. And if I want money, I'll go and work for somebody there here if it's, it's all about feeding my soul. And if that in turn brings in finances to help me retire of travel, then wow, I am following my life purpose and that is what's really important to me. But the takeaway from this is, is stop using time as an excuse. I can't do it because I don't have enough time. And start using it as your power. I have got the time to do this and that is what I choose to do. After this season, I will be stopping football. I'm not sure about SeaWorld, but I will be stopping football. I'm doing a lot more exercise now at home, so I don't need to do that. I may not, I'm going to miss the girls. I really do enjoy communicating with the young girls, but I really want to improve this business I really want to feed my soul more I've learned a lot I've experienced a lot and I would love to be able to share that with you if you are prepared to listen there's only a certain amount of time in a day and we but we all have the same 24 hours again it is what we want to focus on in that 24 hours so think about the time frame you've got in that 24 hours uh, and what you have to do there what is your expectation? Don't over um, tax yourself on this. Be, be mindful of that. Then have a look at your focus. So expectation and your focus. What is your focus? What really is your focus? My focus was, yes, I needed to get the kids done and I needed to be the best mum I can. But in all honesty, my focus was I needed to have that break. I needed to have that afternoon break to be the best mum. Because if my wheels fall off, everyone's, the kids' wheels fall off, basically. And then after you've looked at that focus, 
then start to look at your priorities. So having that break in the afternoon, having that time out to do the course I wanted. At the moment, how I've worked it, I have a Thursday afternoon. Thursday afternoon is my time. I've started doing dimensional painting. I want to learn how to paint. And um, that's every second week. And in between those, I'm starting to get some body work done. So starting to do the massage and, and some body work. As a massage therapist, I know the importance of being able to keep our physical body in tune as well. They're my things I want to do. So I make sure I get everything done around those and allow those times for me. If you've got a messy house, a messy bedroom, because you don't feel like you've got enough time to clean it, be honest with yourself and admit that you're choosing not to clean it. You're putting everything else as a priority before that. What is the minimum you can do that day just to get one section clean? What is tidying up the kitchen, just tidying up the bench tops of the kitchen if it's that bad, just tidying up the kitchen so it's a bit cleaner and tidy, wash the dishes, pop them away? It doesn't have to be the be all and end all. You don't have to eat off the floor. Just make it one step at a time so and then reward yourself so you get those jobs done and reward yourself how do you want to reward yourself have a meditation in the afternoon have a chill out in front of the tv whatever it is you do but give it a time frame as well make it time framed if you don't then you will end up giving yourself so much time And stressing yourself out because you're not getting your other areas done. Get that happy balance. Get that happy um, balance between everything. When you decide to go, I don't have enough time to do that, what you're doing is actually giving your power away to something, time, that you don't have control over, but you do have control over yourself. You do have control over your own time. So don't give your power away. Stop using the excuse, I don't have enough time, and start using your Start using that as a power and saying, what do I want to focus my time on? What is important to me? And allocate those times. Now again, making money is just as important as having time out. They're not, we don't have, we need both. Having a clean environment is just as important as having a run in the park. We need both. It's getting that happy balance, that happy medium. It's the happy medium between the physical and the spiritual. That's what we need. If you're too spiritual, remember what I said last week, you're too woo-woo. If you're too physical, then you're just not, um, you don't, you're not following your uh, life purpose. You're not following your intuition. So getting that happy medium, enough time for all. I think that's about it. I'm just having a quick look at my notes. Yeah. Um, so focus on what, what is the highest priority for you and go, and go with that and get it, get it around it. If you want more understanding of tools or trusting your intuition, subscribe to the podcast, follow me on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter or jump onto the website intuitivenature.com.au and check out the blogs and free free resources. Um, I've also got the Facebook group I talked about which is called Emotional Mastery. I am wanting to do these podcasts live when I start doing interviews on Emotional Mastery. So you'll get that probably the Tuesday afternoon. I want to do the live uh, podcast and then I will so it's a I'll video it then and then I will put it out as a podcast on the Thursday morning again so I'm, I'm trying to bring other people in so you don't have to listen to my voice all the time um I think that was it I just feel like I needed to say something else oh I was a bit nervous today coming on and there's oh I know what I needed to say there's a little place in Minnesota in US, in USA, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing the name right. I just want a big big shout out. In Australia, we would have called it cockatoo because of how it's pronounced, and we have the big birds like that. But it could be cockatoo or cockat. Anyway, it's C O K A T O, and I just wanted a big shout out. You're the top of the the rank for us, um, for me at the moment, as far as downloads and go. So congratulations, well done, and welcome to the podcast. It's lovely to have you here. Uh, another one is Kinvara in Ireland too. Big shout out to you as well. So that's me. Um, have a great week, and I will catch up with you next week. I might even talk about money because we can tend to use money as an excuse too. And I want to talk about fear. So there's lots of things that we can talk about and get an understanding of. If you've got any ideas, send me an email.
info at intuitivenature.com.au. It's an Australian registered business. All the very best, guys. I'm Susan Jane, the Intuitist. Remember, we are all naturally intuitive. It is part of human nature. It's our intuitive nature. Uh, I'm going to say bye for now, and I thank you for listening. Bye. Bye.